Nestle is the most evil company in the world. Swiss-based multinational food and beverage corporation Nestle is regarded as the world's most evil corporation. The company has come under fire for its unethical business methods and exploitative treatment of both its people and the environment, despite having a significant market share and a global presence. Baby Formula Nestle experienced its first major controversy in 1974. When Nestle's baby formula sales began to fall, they began to promote their product as a necessity. To persuade moms that the baby formula was healthier than breast milk, Nestle sent out saleswomen decked out in nurse uniforms to distribute free samples and presents in maternity hospitals. The more formula these nurses deceptively sold, the more money they made because they were paid on commission. By the time people began to realize that the company was misleading them, many of the women using Nestle baby formula had stopped producing breast milk, making them entirely dependent on Nestle's formula. Nestle then increased its marketing and began offering its infant formula in underdeveloped nations. Many moms were mixing Nestle's formula with tainted water because safe drinking water is scarce in many of these nations. Following the consumption of this tainted formula by babies, medical professionals detected an increase in newborn mortality and malnutrition in the nations where Nestle's formula was being sold. As a result, the Infant Formula Action Coalition demanded that Nestle's infant formula be boycotted. In response to the boycott, the World Health Organization developed a health code, which the company eventually agreed to obey after continuing to lose money. Pollution One of the most atrocious actions taken by this company was polluting rivers worldwide. In Brazil, Indonesia, and Thailand, Nestle facilities were discovered to be discharging significant amounts of untreated wastewater into neighboring rivers, according to a Greenpeace research. Lead, aluminum, and ammonia were among the numerous dangerous compounds present in this wastewater. The nearby ecosystems were immediately and severely harmed by the pollution from these factories. Fish populations were wiped out, and the water supply was tainted. Nestle has been charged with misusing water resources in underdeveloped nations like Ethiopia and Pakistan by collecting groundwater for its use, depriving the local population of access to potable water. In some instances, the water got so contaminated that it was dangerous to drink. Child Labor and Trafficking The International Labor Rights Fund sued Nestle on the grounds that it employed child labor in its cocoa farms in the Ivory Coast, where youngsters as young as 12 were compelled to work for little pay and without even the most basic safety and health precautions. In an out-of-court agreement with the ILRF, the company committed to taking action to stop child labor on its plantations. However, additional reports showed that there was still a lot of child labor taking place on cocoa fields. The Fair Labor Association stated in a report that Nestle had not properly monitored and addressed the issue of child labor. The audit claims that the corporation failed to verify suppliers and did not do enough to detect and handle potential instances of forced labor. There have also been multiple allegations of human trafficking connected to Nestle's manufacturing process, in addition to underage labor. The U.S. Department of State issued a citation against the company for its complicity in human trafficking and labor exploitation on its sugarcane fields in Mexico. In addition, a search discovered that Nestle's Indonesian palm oil supply chain was connected to forced labor and other rights abuses against workers. The fact that the company hasn't addressed these problems shows that it doesn't care about doing away with unethical behavior and abuses in its manufacturing process. Should the business be responsible for all wrongdoings? Price fixing. A form of anti-competitive behavior known as price fixing occurs when businesses collude to set pricing for goods or services. This tactic limits competition and raises consumer prices. In several nations, including India, Switzerland, South Africa, Turkey, and Colombia, Nestle has been charged with price fixing. Nestle was found to have broken the rules of competition by conspiring with competing chocolatiers to keep prices unreasonably high, according to the Swiss Competition Commission. 
The company was consequently penalized $49 million for its involvement in the price-fixing conspiracy. When it was discovered that the corporation had conspired again with other coffee producers to maintain high prices in Colombia, it was penalized by the Colombian Competition Authority, stating that it broke the law regarding competition and was fined $2 million. These price-fixing controversies are merely the most recent illustration of Nestle's anti-competitive activities. Promoting unhealthy foods. Processed foods are viewed as the quickest and safest solutions to reduce stress and expenses in the world we live in. This provides several businesses with knowledge on making processed meals, and they earn greatly from the venture. One corporation that has seized the chance to manufacture and market unhealthy meals while mislabeling their goods is Nestle. Additionally, Nestle is renowned for employing dubious strategies to boost sales, such as launching deceptive advertising campaigns that frequently use misleading language and imagery to deceive consumers. It was discovered that the corporation described things that weren't natural or healthy by using phrases like natural and healthy. For instance, Nestle's Shreddy's cereal line, which was promoted as a healthy choice for kids, really had a lot of sugar and saturated fat. The business has been charged with paying doctors to endorse its items as the safest choice, while also paying women to pose as nurses and market the company's goods to the general public. Further research has shown that the company has equally been accused of exploiting developing countries in order to obtain resources for their own products. Ethiopian Debt As a result of protracted droughts, Ethiopia's economy was already vulnerable. By providing them with high-interest loans, Nestle profited from the situation. With sovereignty over Ethiopia's water supply granted in exchange, the business was able to collect and bottle enormous quantities of water for export. Due to this, Ethiopia now owes an unmanageable amount of money and its inhabitants are experiencing worsening water shortages. Despite many requests from the Ethiopian government, Nestle refused to waive the debt, which made the issues worse. Many Ethiopians have suffered greatly as a result of this circumstance and no longer have access to clean drinking water. This company's use of a weak country to gain wealth is abhorrent. Although Nestle is not the only company engaging in these activities, they stand out among other corporations for the sheer magnitude of its unethical actions in Ethiopia. Palm oil deforestation. Within 10 years, Nestle promised to use only raw resources free of deforestation. And how has the food tycoon kept its word? For about a third of the palm oil it uses, it is now impossible to rule out the destruction of rainforests. The production of tropical oils forces smallholders off their land and takes advantage of plantation workers, in addition to destroying rainforests with their rich biodiversity and altering the climate. In a recent study, the corporation made a commitment to establish 100% deforestation-free supply chains in 10 years in order to confront the terrible reality of palm oil production. That moment has come, and a closer examination of recent data released by the company is more than disturbing. Nestle uses palm oil, which 30% of it comes from deforested areas. Although the corporation doesn't say which oil palm plantations are involved, just 62% of its palm oil can be tracked back to the source. Nestle claims that 70% of the palm oil it uses comes from verified deforestation-free farming. 30% of its palm oil comes from untraceable or deforestation-free sources, which the information cannot be independently confirmed. The company acknowledged that in the previous year, 388,047 instances of deforestation were recorded by a satellite rainforest monitoring program Nestle had contracted. In a company video, the head of responsible procurement revealed that Nestle allegedly calls the palm oil suppliers to inquire if the clearing involves them. The majority of the palm oil mills mentioned by Nestle are situated in Indonesia and Malaysia, which together produce 90% of the world's palm oil. ADM, Bungie, Cargill, Olam, and Wilmar, among other agricultural multinationals, have been repeatedly accused by development and environmental organizations of deforestation, abuse of human rights, and pollution. 
These companies also own the majority of the farms. The Maggie Noodles Crisis The Maggie Noodles Crisis in India was so severe that numerous case studies were made about it. Because Maggie's sales accounted for more than 25% of Nestle India's income, the company's survival was almost in jeopardy. The Barabanki district of Uttar Pradesh's food safety authorities stated that samples of Maggie noodles contained high levels of monosodium glutamate, in addition to a high lead content that was beyond the allowable standard. At the time, the Maggie noodles lab labeling packaging said that MSG was not added. According to a report, Sanjay Singh, a food inspector for the Food Safety and Drug Administration of the Uttar Pradesh government, noticed the label reading, no added MSG, on a bright yellow Maggie packet while conducting one of his routine store reads. The instant noodle packs included MSG, which was discovered after it was tested at a state lab in Gorakhpur. A few months later, the samples were transferred to the Central Food Laboratory in Kolkata. The Gorakhpur lab report was verified by the CFL about a year later, and it was also established that the level of lead discovered was over 1,000 times greater than Nestle India Limited had claimed. However, Nestle asserted that there was no order to recall Maggie noodles being sold and that it was safe to eat in its first official statement following the report. Yet, the uproar intensified when Nestle was requested to recall Maggie noodles by the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India. The only option left to Nestle was to pull the well-liked snack off the shelves. Maggie noodles were removed from shelves nationwide and destroyed, totaling close to 38,000 tons. From 80% to 0%, Maggie's market share in India has decreased. The Chinese Milk Scandal When it was discovered that a wide range of firms, including Nestle, had melamine in their products created in China, the Chinese milk-based products came under examination. Melamine is frequently confused with protein. As a result, by using less expensive melamine, Chinese dairy producers falsely claimed that their products included higher levels of protein. This resulted in serious protein deficits in newborn formulae, where protein content is crucial. After a distinct pattern of illness manifested itself in Gansu province, the chemical poisoning became obvious. There were 16 babies diagnosed with kidney stones in a short period of time. In this case, infant formula made by the Sanlu group had been given to the infants. However, it revealed a more significant issue that affected Nestle and its Chinese-made products nationwide. When Taiwan's authorities learned that Nestle's powdered milk and infant formula contained traces of significant levels of melamine, they immediately banned their sale in China. Even though Nestle made an effort to persuade customers that its products from China were secure, in response, Nestle dispatched 20 Swiss expert testers to its Chinese manufacturing facilities to assist in the creation of a stricter melamine detection technique. Purchases of milk from Mugabe Under Mugabe, Zimbabwe's economy experienced a severe downturn that was mostly brought on by state-approved agricultural changes. The European Union and the United States both chastised Nestle Zimbabwe for signing an agreement and continual purchase of milk from Grace Mugabe's farm. In an effort to stop the Mugabe's land grabs and other unjust practices, both governments imposed penalties on them. Nestle's headquarters are in Switzerland, a non-EU country. The corporation was therefore not required to follow any government's sanctions. Nestle initially stated that they were not infringing any laws, either in Zimbabwe or Switzerland, and that they intended to keep doing what they were doing. The corporation subsequently changed its mind and discontinued doing business with the Mugabe's as a result of the increasingly unfavorable press coverage. In a statement defending its earlier decisions, the firm said that doing so would have caused hundreds of job losses among its staff and milk suppliers in an already tough situation and increased food shortages. Do you think that Nestle can change its ways and win the public's forgiveness after hearing about everything it has done, from the numerous scandals to its wicked deeds? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Quality Mainstream for more interesting videos.